here's some uh, disappointing things, I guess, that I'm going to put out. Uh, watching other people's channels talk about the Vegas shooting and kind of their response is disappointing me. I mean, one guy turned it into a, an event of how he wanted to be a hero. You could tell these people who want to be a hero is bad enough that they kind of pray for an event like this to be in it. He's like, I just want to be there. I want to be the guy that kicks the door in and shoots that person and shoots this guy. I want to be able to uh, throw a, a belt on and save someone's life from a moral artery because, man, that's just going to do it. Well, I don't know. A belt kind of works, but you need something else. You need something to twist it. A belt's not going to be just it. If moral artery bleeding is terribly bad, you hit you know, that's why they made tourniquets. So, I'm just saying, like, it, it's kind of narcissistic to really glorify wanting to be in that. You know, it's narcissistic to think that you're going to be like, God, I wish I could be the hero in this. It's just disgusting to me, you know. There's nothing wrong with speculating on what happened. There's nothing wrong with discussing what happened. It, it bothered me to a point, but it brings up another argument too of how do you prepare for something like this? I believe I talked a little bit about it before, but how do you actually prepare for it? Obviously they couldn't carry it at the concert, so legally they couldn't carry it. Maybe you were having alcohol or drinking, so it kind of coexists that maybe you shouldn't be carrying. Everybody always brings up, you should always have a tourniquet on it. Some people do. Some of these office guys, I've seen most of their everyday carry, have like seven knives, four guns, six bags, and you know, they have a bag of knife, and they have four tourniquets on it. Like, where do you put it? Like, I don't know. You know I wear khaki style pants, and I still wouldn't put all that on. I work in a very industrial environment. And having all that on me just doesn't work. Now, I have a gold bag with a car that has all my stuff, but it wouldn't have really helped me in the bag of shooting if I was there. So, I mean, I guess in an incident where how do you respond to it? Our Raven Tactical will be teaching EMT and first responder style level training. We are going to correlate it to a fact that we're going to have a rifle course and a medical course, and we're all going to combine it, where you will be responding to down people, and it's going to be something that not a lot of people offer, so I'm going to go on further, but if you have an idea, like, I can have a messenger style bag, but how does that really work at a concert setting, like, uh, I don't see, like, at a rock concert, you know, you're really blending in while you're going to stand out, you're going to stand out wearing a ridiculous messenger bag. You know, it's one thing to walk around in the city or downtown or have it on you. Most venues don't even let you bring your backpacks because of people, you know, bombs or all this kind of stuff. So, how do you actually get it in? You know? And the whole concept of scrapping an iPad too. Uh, you know, you're not blending into your scenario in that sense. You kind of look like... Johnny J. Rambo that wants to be, again, play the hero, but at the same time, you would have been effective, but I, I just don't know. Uh, let me know, I mean, I guess give me some ideas. Shoot me some ideas on how you would carry in this environment. How you would carry medical equipment. And I know people have mission bags or goal bags, but how are you going to carry in an environment where you're at a music fest and they're going to pat you down and most of the time they don't let women even bring purses and kind of thing. So, I mean, obviously you choose to attend it and you choose to attend or you choose not to. A lot of places, I don't like crowded public places. I think it's just a nightmare because you are stuck together. 
I don't like super loud people. I don't really like big crowds. I try to avoid them. I mean, <clears throat> hell, where I live, I moved out to the middle of nowhere and we have a homestead. So my idea of busy is maybe 20 people. I mean, the town's not even that big. I love that style atmosphere. I choose to kind of live away from it. That doesn't mean I won't respond to it. I carry a go bag in the truck. And, you know, I have kind of a go bag with me when I go to work. So I have that in sense. And that we usually have it with us. And that's one thing that I'm going to say I don't have it all the time with me because sometimes, you know, the wife takes it out of her car for a room for loading up groceries and then forgets to put it back in. So it's one thing that I think we need to put back in and we're never to have it. And having multiple vehicles does make things difficult. And it's kind of on the go back sense of it too. I mean, if you're going to have uh, concepts where how far do you want to go? Well, most people should be at least what I consider CLS, Combat Lifesaver Certified. For us, it's a four-day course. It used to involve doing IVs and whatnot. They took the IV part out because people were focusing too much on IVs. Um, however, their most of their stuff is uh, stopping bleeding. It's like airway bleeding and all this. If you can't stop, if you can't get them to breathe or stop the bleeding, they're gonna die before you get the IV in, anyways. So. And then there's also a part on it where they talk about people that are beyond your care. If they're beyond your level of care, you can maybe assign someone who's not there while you're trying to attend to someone else that you can save to comfort them. There's nothing better than having someone be at someone's side, comforting them, telling them it's going to be okay, but they're terminally going to die unless they got, unless you have someone who's at a higher level skill and maybe they can't even save them. I mean, a, a good example is this, you know, when you watch the movie um, Pearl Harbor and they went through and they were going through all the casualty rates and they're sitting there going, this one's terminal, this one's savable, you know, you have to assess that situation where you're going to have to determine whether or not you think you can save it with your skill set and supplies. So these are all things that I'm going to bring up in the class too. I would hope we can have something uh, for spring, at least shoot for one or two of these classes. Our EMTs that we're working with are top-notch professionals. They do it for a living. They're very good. They're uh, very reliable and very knowledgeable. I would trust them any day in a firefight. But I guess this really goes into a little bit further depth of, you know, I guess if you choose to go into an environment like uh, a concert like this, you take that risk of you don't have that ability. All right, I gotta go.